Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another training series from Google Analytics PMs. Uh, today, we're going to cover the differences between UA and Google Analytics 4. My name is Breen Baker. I'm a senior product manager on the Google Analytics team, and I'll be leading you through this training today. Before I get started, just wanted to remind everybody, if you're not already aware, that this is part of a broader training series led by Google Analytics product managers in order to help you understand and set up Google Analytics 4 properties delivered by the folks who built them. So we'll be offering some step-by-step -step guidance, including some demonstrations in some of these trainings, and we hope you enjoy the trainings. Today, we'll be covering a number of topics, enhanced measurement, as well as event modification and creation, event parameter examples along with conversions and audiences, and then lastly, organization and governance followed by privacy controls. So we'll start with enhanced measurement as well as event modification and creation. So Universal Analytics had seven rigidly structured event types. You can see a couple of the examples here, page view, timing, and then the one catch-all for all custom events, custom event. Google Analytics 4 has broken free of that paradigm and now can enable any set of any named events to be collected. So you can name your events, again, as some examples are here, foo, video start, or really whatever you want. Um, and this was designed to enable you to fit the names of these interactions that your end users are engaging with your property on to fit the actual name of those interactions and not have to overload some concept like category action and label to help understand what is actually going on. So again, that's a very extensible framework, a lot more flexible than universal analytics. Adding to that, we also have a flexible set of parameters that can be sent with each event. So again, going back to universal analytics, we had a system where you could send us a set of parameters, highly valuable parameters, but a strict set of parameters specifically for custom event category action and label was the way that you could send any and all information and you had to best fit whatever you were trying to collect into those three parameters. With Google Analytics 4, you can again break free of that. You can send 25 parameters for free and up to 100 parameters for 360 clients and you can call these parameters whatever you want that best fits what's actually being stored, what actual attribute is being classified underneath that event. So this was built again so it could best fit your actual company's language, how your employees name the kind of interactions and things that are occurring with your end users and develop reports specific to those concepts that really speaks truth to your employees. Specifically to events and parameters, again, UA had six rigid sets of events and then one kind of catch-all custom event you could send a very well-known but rigid kind of set of parameters along with those events, and that's basically all you could do. So our users overloaded things like category, action, and labels so that all of their custom things were in one place, and it was more or less difficult for them to navigate. GA4 allows you to name these custom events however you want and actually go and find the report specific to that event. So you no longer have to go to one catch-all place of all of your custom actions. Uh, you can name the action appropriately and then go to the place that best describes those interactions and then check out the parameters and see uh, the attributes that are associated with them. And then building on top of that, GA4 has developed a set of recommended events that you can collect along with parameters that should accompany those events. And when implemented, Google Analytics 4 delivers a specific experience designed around that. So e-commerce is a good example where there's a set of recommended events where if you collect the data in the right structure, we'll deliver a host of end reports inside of our UI to help you understand the full e-commerce experience. Conversions and audiences really derive from those events and those parameters. And the first thing to note is really that Google Analytics 4 has just more. You're able to classify more events as conversions because of this extensible and flexible event model. G4 also becomes more expressive with respect to audiences. If you can imagine sending only three pieces of custom information, the rigidity of what that created for audience classification was real. Now that I can send a number of events of any name, along with 25 parameters of any name, I can be very descriptive and expressive with my events and then build audiences based on that expectation of that expressiveness. So 
it's a far more flexible schema, but also far more flexible audiences in terms of what you can define and how you can define it so that it's easy to understand what you're looking at. And then last, but certainly not least, very cool, is the concept of audience triggers. So in Google Analytics 4, you can set an event to be fired when a user enters an audience. Why might you want to do that? You might want to target a user from the perspective of a conversion occurring and not based on an audience. I might want to do some very specific things based on some conversion, and that conversion might be perfectly described by the existing definition of an audience. I should just go ahead and use that directly and not try to fire a conversion using code or even using event editing and creation. Um, so again, these additional tools provide more flexibility to create something, objects that are more expressive, audiences and conversions that I can then activate more directly in a better way in the ads tools. Moving on to organization and governance now. Uh, if you are aware of what Universal Analytics had for organization and governance and a lot of other features, it was Views. Views was kind of the catch-all solution that dealt, again, with organization, governance, and actually a few other features that are orthogonal from those two topics, totally different things. In Google Analytics 4, we tried to make it more easy to understand and navigate by splitting these two concepts up. So in Google Analytics 4, you can actually organize data and you can govern them using two different tools. Just to call out the governance tools, which we'll go over on the next slide, are 360 only. Those are sub-properties and roll-ups. But for organization, that's available to anyone. So inside Google Analytics 4 today, I can create a custom report. That custom report feels a lot like a universal analytics custom report. I can select a number of dimensions. I can add a filter to that. But that's where, we read, where the similarities stop. Because I can, in Google Analytics 4, take this custom report and I can put it inside of what we call a report collection, which you can consider a folder of reports. And then I can share that folder in my left navigation with the specific name. Again, whatever name you want to give it. Let's say it's my East Coast marketing set of reports. And so I create a folder called East Coast marketing. I'm going to put that into my left nav so that my East Coast marketing team knows exactly where to go to see the data and the experience that I've built for them. That organizational experience is available for everyone. And then again, for governance, we have sub properties and roll ups. Sub properties is a property with a subset of data, which you create a filter to create that subset of data, which you then give a subset of users access to, versus a roll up, which works similarly to a universal analytics property in that it's a group of properties. It's going to ingest data from multiple properties and process all of that data together. The net benefit from Google Analytics 4 rollup properties over Universal Analytics properties is that it's not just a set of reports. A rollup property is a fully fledged property, fully featured, and ready to do everything you would expect an ordinary property to do. So specifically for sub properties and rollup properties, which remember are 360 only features, this slide can help you kind of understand a very typical case of how we see uh, sub properties and rollups being used today. So as you can see here, we have a couple source properties, could be more than two, but in this example, we'll just show two, where I have reason to break this information out by region. And this is a very common use case. So for source property, uh, one, I've broken it out into US East and US West. In the course of source property two, I've broken out my Canada region very specifically, because that's very important, apparently, for my source property two. And then I'm going to roll all of that data up into my global property up above. For the source property, that's meant to focus, let's say, the U.S. East team on the U.S. East data so they don't get distracted by the data coming from U.S. West. Same thing for the Canada sub-property. And for the roll-up, I'm bringing all this data together for my global marketing team so that they can action across these regions and do more global, more comprehensive marketing campaigns. And then lastly, we'll end with privacy controls. So there's a difference from UA and GA4, basically in terms of the granularity of control. UA does have privacy controls. So you're able to turn on and off the collection of information. You're able to turn on and off the sharing of that information. However, in Google Analytics 4, we took it one step further. So not only can you choose what data is collected, you can choose the region that that data is collected. Specifically, I'm referring to Google Signals here. And then additionally, in terms of 
linking and sharing data with activation advertising tools, you can also choose which regions would pass data to those systems using the sensitive data. So you can both on the collection side and on the activation side, control very granularly at the region level what data is used for behavioral from collection side or advertising on the activation side. And this is clearly targeted to enable different regions to operate in different ways based on the regulations of those different places. And so we'll close with a typical takeaway slide to remind you of kind of the key elements of what we hope you've learned from this session. One is that Google Analytics 4 empowers marketers to collect data directly from the UI. We've taken great leaps to reduce the amount of coding that's necessary. And you can even, you know, create an event that's derived from another event, which then creates an audience, which then has an audience trigger. These things can play and build on top of each other and create very advanced collection models. So I advise you all to take a deep look at that. Second is that events and audiences are more expressive. So when we're thinking about Google Analytics 4, we shouldn't be thinking like we did with Universal Analytics. We really can break away from the type of events and event names that we used to collect before and, and really break away from the kind of rigid kind of parameter sets that we were allowed to collect before. I'm speaking specifically to category, action, and label. For governance, just to know that governance is a core concept. So the, all of the organizational features, the sub-properties and roll-ups, like I said, were just regular properties. There's nothing built in here so that there's any special element where I can only access one thing in one special place or have one capability only in one property type. These features are core to every property and are universal tools across all property types. That's important to understand. Uh, and then lastly, that Google Analytics 4 has and will continue to have more advanced privacy controls. And this is really important because we are now in and will continue to move deeper into more privacy-centric world where this is going to become more and more important. So lots of energy is putting put into that on the Google Analytics 4 side, and you can already see the fruits of that labor already. Thank you all again for joining us today for this training series. Uh, once again, this is part of a broader training series, and we hope you all can tune in for, for other trainings as well. If you have any additional questions, uh, the Google Analytics 4 Help Center is a great resource for, for any questions you might have. And if you happen to be a 360 client, of course, we recommend you reaching out to your point of contact. Thank you.